This is experiment eight, synthesis of aspirin. Today we're gonna to be synthesizing aspirin. We're starting in the procedure at the synthesis section, which is on page 215. So what I have here is I've got my uh, hot water bath heating up. It's not quite where I need it to be, so I'll have to wait a little while for it to get between 70 and 80 degrees. Um, I've got my uh, ice bath prepared with my distilled water and the ethanol. I've measured out um, 2.03 grams of the salicylic acid that's going to be converted. And then I also have my acetic anhydride and the concentrated sulfuric acid waiting to be combined together. All right, so I'm going to, now that my um, water bath is up to the correct temperature, I'm going to follow the procedure. So the next thing I need to do is inside the personal fume hood is add four milliliters of the acetic anhydride. So I'm going to measure that out in my graduate cylinder. So I have four milliliters of that under the personal fume hood. I'm going to add that to my Erlenmeyer flask. And then I'm going to take four drops of the concentrated sulfuric acid very carefully. I'm going to swirl these together in order to mix them. And then I'm going to place that in my hot water bath and it's going to sit there for 15 to 20 minutes. Not with this in there, it'll fit otherwise. There we go. Okay, so now that the 15 to 20 minutes has passed, I'm going to remove my Erlenmeyer flask from the water bath. And then I'm going to add 25 milliliters of cold water and about 10 grams of ice. We're going to allow that to um, sit for about 10 minutes in order to let the um, excess uh, acetic anhydride um, hydrolyze and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so our aspirin reaction flask is uh, for the most part cooled down. So hopefully we have enough solid in here. So we're going to filter this using the vacuum filtration system. So earlier we weighed the top of the Buchner funnel with the wet filter paper and this portion of the filter or this portion of the Buchner funnel weighs 15.22 grams. And so we're going to, I hope they can hear this. Yeah. <laughs> we turned on the vacuum filtration system and now we're going to swirl our product and filter it through that system as well. We want to make sure we have all the solid moving so it all comes out of the Erlenmeyer flask. We're going to press down to make sure we get a good seal and get everything flowing down through the filter paper. Once that liquid has cleared out and we can see it's mostly just solid at the top, then we're going to add the chilled ethanol and spot it over the top of the filter paper to make sure it gets nice and dry. So now we're just rinsing down the sides of the Erlenmeyer flask to make sure we get all of the product out of there. So we're rinsing down with some more of that chilled water and we're going to run that through the filter as well. Now we've got the chilled ethanol. 
And so we have a pipette that we'll use to drop about 20 drops or so over the top of our uh, solid that's left at the top of the vacuum filter in order to make sure our um, product is very dry. All right, so we're allowing the product to dry for about one minute, and then we're going to go take our second measurement of the dried uh, product plus the top of the Buchner funnel. Okay, so we weighed the Buchner funnel for the second time after drying. That mass came out to be 18.26 grams. All right, so we isolated some of the product onto a watch glass. And this is what we're going to be doing, the TLC and ferric chloride and the litmus paper test on. All right, so now we're going to dissolve. So now we're going to dissolve the made product in ethanol. And this is for the preparation of the TLC. TLC aspirin. That's the magic. Okay, so we've dissolved the made aspirin in the ethanol. And now we're going to add the standards to test tubes. So this is the salicylic acid standard. And this is the aspirin standard. All right, so this is our prepared TLC plate. So I have labeled there made aspirin, salicylic acid standard, and aspirin standard. We're gonna spot each substance with the, on the crosshairs. All right, so here we have the three spotted substances. So you can see the made aspirin, the salicylic acid standard and the aspirin standard. And this is visualized with the UV light. So now we can look at uh, the comparison on the litmus paper while we wait for the TLC um, to run. So we have there, we have the plate be prepared inside the TLC chamber. And now we have the blue litmus paper and we're gonna um, react it with our salicylic acid, which is in the center there, that's our standard. And so we can see that when the salicylic acid uh, is reacted with our blue litmus paper, it will start to turn red. But And so this one is reacted with the salicylic acid and you can see it's starting to turn pink as it starts to dry off. And so we have a positive result for the salicylic acid. Now we'll react our made um, aspirin in order to see if there's any unreacted salicylic acid left there using the blue litmus paper. So as you can see, we have some slight color change happening, but not nearly the same color change we had. So there might be some unreacted salicylic acid in our solution. And now as a comparison, we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, blue litmus paper in with the standard aspirin to show that when that is reacted, we don't get any color change. So that one just shows that it is not an acid. And there we have just completely blue. The next test that we'll do is the ferric chloride test. And so we're just gonna add one drop of that in with our um, made aspirin and see and look for a color change. So a positive test would show a blue or purple. Here we can see that there is no color change and so we have a negative result. So this only reacts if there is a phenol present 
and if there is leftover salicylic acid, since that is a phenol, and so that one is a negative result. So the pres the the lack of a phenol, but the positive result for the litmus paper test indicates that our final product was acidic, but it was not salicylic acid. So that likely means that uh, we have acetic acid contaminating the solution. So that may be due to the fact that the solution may not have been rinsed completely enough. So now that we have um, reached the top of the TLC plate, or close to the top of it, we took our plate out of the chamber, marked the line where the solvent went to, and now uh, Damien is circling the dots of where our uh, three different component, three different uh, samples have moved, so that we can take their RF value measurements by measuring their distance they moved. So here. We can see the results, and so the first one is our made aspirin, and you can see it lines up very well with the third one, which is the uh, standard aspirin, and then the salicylic acid in the middle has moved further up, so we can see that our made aspirin matches up well with the standard aspirin. I like it. The values for the distance that the substance has traveled, uh, aspirin moved 32 millimeters, our made aspirin moved 33 millimeters, salicylic acid moved 41 millimeters, and the solvent distance was 51 millimeters. Thanks for watching Synthesis of Aspirin. You should be able to complete your procedure quiz now.